There we go. Let's see here. There we go. Hello. Welcome to our very first session of Dragonbane, a tabletop role playing system uh, from Free League Publishing that we will be going on an adventure in together with you guys. Um, and my players today are SPG William. Welcome. Uh, Ray. <clears throat> hello, hello. And we have Kelly Drew Voss. Hello. Uh, next time, I'm hoping we will <coughs> also get with us uh, David Wilson, who couldn't join us today due to some technical issues, and Matthias Ally Gaming, who uh, couldn't join us due to some scheduling issues. But that's fine. Um, we'll manage uh, just as fine as well for now. But uh, hope the group will grow, this group of adventures. So, before we get started, uh, we're actually going to create uh, a character for you live, so you, you guys can follow along on how we do that. Um, it's going to go quite quickly, I hope. And then we get started with the adventure. Um, and then, obviously, as we go, the, um, the more we will um, discover of the system together. Uh, I've played a lot of tabletop RPGs over the last couple of years. <coughs> I've never, I haven't been a DM for the last five years. So I'm going to be a bit rusty on that, I'm sure. Um, William, have you played any Dungeons and Dragons or similar tabletop RPGs? <clears throat> yeah, I've played a lot, actually. I just got together mm -hmm. like a weekend ago. Um, the only thing is, is that everything we do is all homebrew. So we have our own rules, our own dice, uh, all that stuff. So learning this shouldn't be too complicated because we just make stuff up as we, yeah. you know. And this is also on, very so. simple. Like the, the system, I mean, it's not a like, basic system, but it's a very easy to get into system uh the rules aren't that long um and it's quite quite um you know com it's comprehensible yeah. but also quite easy to get into i i remember that the bi a big difference is that a d20 is a demon and that's bad you don't yeah. want that so the biggest yeah. difference from like this is actually quite similar to uh dungeons and dragons but instead of it being in as in dungeons and dragons where you have you know a 20 is a natural 20 is awesome you succeed and a natural one is bad uh it's the other way around in this system we're not trying to roll over our ability scores. If we have, you know, if you have a 14 in sneaking and you try to sneak and you roll a die, you want to roll under 14 on the 20 sided die, not above it. Yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, so there's a few differences from, from D&D, but otherwise it's quite similar in a sense. Funny thing is, this system is actually over 40 years old or about 40 years old. Uh, it was never released outside of Sweden or outside of the Nordics until now. Today is the official release date even for this system. So as of today, wow. you can buy it and get it Get a PDF, or you can buy it and uh, and get it get a copy, physical copy shipped to you uh, from Free Leaks uh, partners and uh, their own website. So, yeah, do, they have, do, do they have modules and stuff? Is that what we're going to be doing? Um, they 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 have you know you know they have a box, so you get the box set uh, with you know some dice, a rule book, some pre generated characters, some character sheets, um, and I think also a map, um, and then you can start playing right away. Would you and then over time, like over time, they will add release expansion packs basically with like here's another set of adventure stories, or here's another, maybe gotcha. another class, or something like that. Um, <coughs> but the but yeah, like what's what you have in the box is everything you need to get started, and that's all there is at the moment. Uh, more yeah, will come the, later down the line. One of the awesome things about tabletop gaming is that it's all up to the DM's imagination, exactly. So, <laughs> what we have now, uh, and what we're like. Is good enough to get us started, but uh, and we might get some find some great stuff in the future. Maybe the one, maybe they release a bestiary with some cool monsters, and then we'll use that to create our own adventures and storylines. Um, but Ray, you ha have you played any tabletop RPGs in the past? Uh, back in the eighties and the nineties. So, yeah, so it's been a while. Uh, it's been a very while. So I am, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. I am a noob, but I'm always yeah. willing to. But that's learn fine. We're stuff. here to learn together. Um, yes. And Kelly, you have you played any <coughs> tabletop RPGs? Um, I've played uh, once or twice of D and D, but uh, this will, uh, yeah. Uh, but I played some BG three, so I I think I get the gist of how to play yeah. D and D. Exactly, it's like uh, I mean D and D is uh, Baldur's Gate three is running on D and D. This will be hopefully similar, but instead of a video game, we're using our imagination. We're also using a yes. two that we'll so you can see uh, here. Uh, this is the. Like the player screen, uh, I have a single screen, but with a lot more settings. Um, that's called uh, Let's Roll, which is a free-to-use system, um, but uh, with some paid, paid optional content that we don't really need for this. Uh, so I'm not gonna, so we're not going to use that. Um, but yeah, so let's do this. I will change what I'm sharing. We might lose the music, but that's fine. And share my entire screen instead, uh, so I can show you guys how we create. <coughs> 
So, in the system, a character sheet looks basically like this. You have uh, your name, you have yeah, you know, your old stats, all the numbers like this. This is what we then use to make roles. And we get now we're going to create one of these um, for um, for Khaled Revolt's character, who's going to be a Wolfkin Mage. So I'm going to bring up the rule set on screen, and we'll go through how you do this. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's the the like the it's 112 pages in the book ish. Um, it's quite a good looking book. So this is a PDF. We're going to go down to creating your ca player character. So first of all, you have already picked your uh, race. Uh, you are going to be a wolfkin. Am I right? Yes. Then I will add in the system a kin wolfkin. Uh, your profession. You have chosen already, right? A mage. Yeah. That would be so, a mage. Yeah. So we we have already done uh, done the first step. Play, select your kin, and you can either roll for it, or you can just pick one. Um, so a wolfkin. We'll go down a little bit and show you how they look. They look like this. Um, wolfkins are the untamed fury of the wilds. They may be highly intelligent creatures, and like the elves, they are, have an unfailing tendency to sink into thought, pondering the mysteries of the universe. But simmering under the surface are ancient hunting instincts and an unquenchable anger over past wrongs committed against wolfkin, wolves, and the wilderness in general. As hunters and pathfinders, they are second to none, but wolfkins can also be found as heavily armed merchants, mystics, or healers in human settlements. Um, so yeah, do you have have an idea for a name? Uh, are you going to go with Dragon Voss, maybe? I... Yes. Yeah. So Dragon. we have then Dragon Voss. You, as a wolf, can have a racial ability called hunting instincts. <clears throat> this costs three willpower, <coughs> which is basically like your mana pool. Uh, and using this ability, you can designate a creature in sight or a creature you can catch the scent of as your prey. This counts as an action in combat. You can follow the scent of your prey up for a full day, and you can spend another further one uh, willpower, but not an action, to gain a boon, which means advantage, for any attack against your prey. So if you select this guy is my prey, you will get double dice whenever you try to um, roll your attack rolls. Oh, wow. So next step then is to select a class. You have a little selected mage. Other options are artisan, bard, fighter, hunter, knight, uh, and some others that we'll get later. So mage. Um, as a mage, you are you work slightly different from the other, the other races. Instead, you, instead of having a racial... Or, or like a, some class skills, you are basically um, so you get some skills depending on which uh, you don't get a her heroic ability. But you say you get your magic, but you also get some um, skills depending on your class of uh, school of magic. So do you want to be an animist ma mage, an elementalist mage, or a mentalist mage? Why don't you um... read, them, read them the definitions? Yes. So they are. Let's see here. Oh no. No, no, they're not. <coughs> um, the benefit of PDF, uh, mentalist. There we go, search. There we go. So, elementalists are... Um, so, or animist. Uh, the world is alive. It's full of spirits and gods, and all things have a soul. Like nature itself, spirits and gods are neither good nor evil. They may not be omnipotent, uh, potent, but they possess great power and should be treated with respect. If you speak to them in the right way, they may, le may lend you power in your animist magic. Um, elementalism <clears throat> is, according to elementalists, all things in the universe are consist of four elements, wind, water, earth, and fire, in different combinations. The mind and spirit are associated with wind, adaptability, and creativity are linked with water. Action and energy are linked to fire, and steadfastness and determination are the properties of earth. As for mentalists, you believe that your mind and body are the center of the universe. By focusing and training your mind, you gain control over your body and the magic that flows through the, through it and the world. Any any uh, anything that tickles your mind about those? Um, I'm kind of oh. stuck between mentalism and animism. Yeah, because I feel animism would be very useful because he can heal. Yeah. Uh, um, so if you take a look at if we take a look at some of the spells available to um, to animism, for example, you have like things like Animal Whisper, Banish, uh, Lightning Bolt and Lightning Flash, Heal Wounds, uh, Sleep, Thunderbolt, uh, and Golfing the other one was forest. 
Ooh. Yeah, Engulfing Forest is another one of those. Um, which one was your second one? The uh, second one would be uh, mentalism. So mentalism, you have things like uh, levitate, long strider, farsight, power fist, stone skin, uh, scrying, divination, telepathy, dominate, enchant weapon, Ooh. flight, teleportation. Which one are you leaning towards? Um, I think I'm going to go with mentalism. Right, so mentalism. We'll get back to the actual spell list um, in a second. So that means you your first skill that you pick as a racial then would be the uh, sec like a not a primary skill that's in the skill list, but a secondary skill called mentalism. You will uh, this will be based on intelligence, <laughs> and we'll add a score to that in a second. And so then you need to be since you are adult. Uh, or no, we haven't picked age yet. Um, right, so we need to pick an age for you. Do you want to be young, adult, or old? Um, the younger you are, the higher your stats you will have, but the older you are, the more proficiencies you will have. <clears throat> hey, Meg. Hey, Eurotrix. Hey, everyone. That's a good one. Uh, you know, <coughs> I'm going to go with adult. Keep it neutral. So you, you want to go with? Go with adult. Adult, yeah. That's uh, probably recommended to, to, to go with, to be honest. Um, that means you will have six of the uh, elemental of the mentalism skills. And you will also then have another four you can pick out of it. So you, out of the list of acrobatics, uh, awareness, brawling, evade, healing, languages, and myth and legend, you need to pick five of them because one of them is mentalism that you need to pick. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Basically, you have uh, two the, two of these that you're not going to pick initially. <coughs> you can add and add the other two that, later if you want. Um, do you have any preference among them? So obviously, uh, acrobatics is uh, I mean jumping over things smoothly and things like that. Awareness is you know being aware of your surroundings. Brawling is melee combat in a sense. I think uh, evasion, obviously evading attacks. Uh, healing is when you try to you know. Because healing, you can heal with obviously heal with magic. We can also do, you know, actually Green. tending for a wound. Uh, right. Languages speak for itself. Myth and legends are like lore. Um, you say you're gonna pick six. Uh, it's, yeah, you're gonna pick six of these, but one of them you're gonna that you're picking is mentalism. Um, so you're picking five of them technically. Okay. So then I would probably go with. Uh... <coughs> Brawling is that with is that like uh, with my fists or yeah like melee combat in, in general I think it's uh but yeah generally uh, we can take a look at the rule book I don't uh, skills comes down here uh, after the hero I think no I went too far <laughs> did I or did I no no this yeah the skill list is down here so never mind uh, right so brawling yeah, by name of the book it says oh that's not brawling brawling brawling, brawling. <coughs> right uh, used for unarmed combats with fist feet teeth or claw yeah okay so then I probably would do uh, acrobats awareness evade healing and languages uh, Evade healing and languages. Awesome. Um, so now that you've done that, you also have another four you can pick from the total list. So you can pick from the ones that you that you had from your uh, from your uh, uh, class, but you can also pick any of the others. So you, like the full list is obviously like the, um, you have bartering, beast lore, bluffing, bushcraft, crafting. Hunting and fishing, myths and legends, uh, performance, persuasion, riding, seamanship, sleight of hand, sneaking, spot hidden, swimming. Uh, we also have uh, things, you know, weapon skills like axes, bows, brawling, crossbows, hammers, knives, slings, spears, staves, and swords. So four out of all of those you need to pick, um, and it okay. could be. Um, so, for example, uh, we all have, have someone uh, someone who's good at bushcraft. Uh, so maybe you you don't, but you could all like it's a, one of those like really useful skills for someone in your party to have. 
but it's also useful for everyone to have because like if you're two that have it you can you know help each other out i have um, bushcraft yeah and for example bushcraft is you know being aware of your surroundings and you know going to, like when you're going through you know not following the, the common the, the common road you need to roll bushcraft to survive in the wilderness and find your find your way and find food and things like that i would probably do a uh, spot hidden for one yeah spot hidden sneaking for two sneaking um might might want to pick one of the weapon skills yeah i was gonna say weapon skills uh, and if we look at the, if I go back up and look at the, um, the mage weapon sets, you can like you can either start with a staff, a knife, or no weapon at all. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, probably do a knife. <clears throat> yeah. So then you probably want to pick knives. I would argue. Yes. Uh oh. Don't get in a right. knife fight with a wolf, kin. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so then, one more. Um, and then I'll do persuasion. Persuasion, awesome. So the way this will work now. Now we need to do one of the most uh, like roll for your basic st attributes. Uh, and the way we do that is, I think I probably missed that seven things up here. Um, so. The way we roll for your, um, so yeah, roll for attributes. The way we do that is we roll, uh, what is it? Is it five? Let's just put that, hang on. Uh, uh, we can just go search attributes. It's always a fun thing with like RPGs. Like, how do I do this? There we go. So, you we will roll four d six and we'll remove the worst die, giving you a score between three and eighteen. So I will go ahead and roll uh, for you four d six, uh, and I think if we, uh, I think I'll just move to this so we can see it all. So I roll here, roll for attributes. Uh, you'll see four dice coming up in the screen. We'll remove the lowest one, which is a one. That's an eleven. So if you just write down eleven, uh, the rule says you, you can do this in two ways. You can either fill in, like first you roll for strength, then for constitution. We don't do that. We instead choose to do the more, uh, the the more fair part thing. Thing I think to do is to roll for all of them, uh, all six attributes, and then place them however you want. Yeah, you write down what you um, yeah. what what you actually rolled, and then you get to decide where they go. Exactly. So you have eleven in, in one of them. Okay. Uh, in the next one, we have 12. And then you have a 14. Ooh, then it's a 7. <laughs> it's going to be hard to roll under that. <laughs> yeah. Or harder. Next up, we have uh, 14. And I think this is the last roll, if I'm not mistaken. That's a 13. You have six different values now, right? Yes. Yes. So these six values go into strength, constitution, agility, intelligence, willpower, and charisma. And they will define your basic... Uh, first of all, like willpower <coughs> will define, simply put, your mana points, your willpower points. Uh, and... The constitution will define your hit points. They also do, uh, but they also each skill, like agility or or knives, may call or use, upon them. Yeah, they call upon them as their basic. So you can like if, even if you don't have bluffing, you can still bluff, of course. But it will require you to roll under your um, uh, the base value, and the base value is defined by the attribute points. So if you have a high intelligence, you're good at everything that has to do with intelligence. But the things you're proficient in, you will start by having twice the amount um, uh, that of your uh, attributes uh, attribute score. So basically, what what would you like to put in strength? Uh, I can also mention when you do your mentalism, that will be happening based on intelligence. So intelligence is how good you are at magic. Willpower is how much magic you can actually use. Okay. 
uh, my strength is if I use my weapon. Uh, not even that, because your weapon no. is knives, and that's used as agility. Yeah. Agility, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. This, this is not great. So, if you, if I look at the skills you've picked at the uh, as the ones you want to start with, you don't have any skill uh, strength skills at all. Okay, so then I'll put my seven in strength. <laughs> like, you will be weak as shit, but that's fine. Um, right. So, because well, well, I mean, that strength also goes for health too, right? No, uh, constitution. constitution is constitution. Is, I'm okay. Okay. Next up yeah. is constitution. What you want to be uh, have your health uh, value as also. So this also ha takes care of <clears throat> I don't know no skills at all. Uh, so yeah, constitution is basically just your health, uh, unless I say like, all oh, right, roll for constitution. Okay. Um... I'll do that one as a 12. 12. Yeah. Meaning, meaning you start out with 12 hit points. Uh, agility is what you use for your knives, for your evasion, for your acrobatics, uh, and for your sneaking, amongst other things. What would you what do you want to put in there? Um, I will put it my 13. <laughs> 13, yep. Yeah. Intelligence, your spellcasting ability, also healing and awareness uh, and languages and spots in spots hidden. That will be 14. 14, yep. And then willpower, your mana points, essentially. That will be 14 as well. As well, that means you have 14 willpower points. And then charisma, what's left? It's an, an 11. 11, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Right, so next up, we go back to the rule. Uh, let's see, can I? Yeah, I can do that. Good. Let's go back to the rules, because next up we have this whole fun thing that... Right, here we go. <clears throat> um, right, your movement as a wolfkin is... Um, starts out with 12, and then based on your agility score, which is 13, that means you get plus 2 to that, so you have 14 in movement. And you're quite quick. I think we forgot to add this. I think we're going to add one, like, a couple points for USBG. I think we forgot to add your agility bonus right. to uh, to that. But we'll do that later. Um, so <clears throat> the way that it works, if you have an attribute of, uh, like your lowest is seven in strength, meaning your base chance for anything strength related is a four. So anything with strength, like crafting, you have, you have to roll a d20 and roll under four to succeed in. Uh, meaning and the same goes for then axis and brawl what's 44 and then brawling and hammers and spears and swords um, if you have between 9 and 12 you start with a 5 so for constitution that's uh, for, so for charisma for example that's a 5 in things like bartering bluffing um performance persuasion but persuasion you picked as you're starting meaning you get double so 10 for you to persuade someone you need to basically you have 50 50 support per chance basically which is pretty good uh for a then we have uh, let's say agility then uh for guilty you have 13 or higher so 13 to, to 15 you begin with six 16 to 18, you begin with 7. Uh, you don't have an 8, 7. So you have 6, basically, in everything else. Uh, it's meaning you have started with 12 in basically all your skills. Unless that you're uh, trained in. And other thing is you're untrained in, you start with 6. It's, in, like, it's a streamlined way to do it, I think. It's quick with it. <laughs> Um, then we have the weapon skills, the same thing. So, we think we have your, I think we have all your stats. Uh, right, the, um, damage bonuses. Um, so, 13 to 16. Uh, you don't have one in there, you have... A D1, D4 as your 
Uh, so if you do damage with a, a guilty based weapon, you get deal an additional d4 of damage. Uh, with a strength awesome. one, nothing. You have no bonus. So I think we are basically done with that part. Um, we're going to give you the. Where did I put? Let me see that. Um, the. So your, your starting gear is uh, obviously the. Uh, we picked the ones in here. I'll just copy paste them. So you start with a knife, a wand, a grimoire, which is, which is where you have your magic, a torch, flint and tinder, a d6 of food rations, and a d8 of silver. I'll just add that to the notes for now. Uh, and we have one thing left to pick for you, I think, which would be your weakness. Yeah, pick a weakness. Uh -oh. So, <laughs> uh, weaknesses are... Uh, I'll describe it as this: Your character is capable of, of individual risking. Uh, is a capable individual risking their life and limb for honor, gold, or adventure. Yet even an adventurer has a weakness, an Achilles heel that can get you into trouble. You can roll or choose from the table below to choose your weakness freely. Your weakness adds depth and personality to your character, and can also be used by the GM to ch create challenges for them. Roleplay according to your weaknessing uh, weaknesses will give you extra advancement marks at the end of the session, which is basically experience points. Um, so they have no like gameplay mechanic to them. Otherwise, but other than if you role play on them, I will award you by giving you uh, letting you train a skill. So you can pick from this list. You have things like gullible, greedy, uh, thin skinned, foolhardy, uh, faint hearted, monster slayer, uh, intolerant, slothful, gluttonous, kleptomaniac, vain, reckless, fearful of magic. That's a fun one for Mage. Uh, craving knowledge, child of the wild, boastful, violent, overbearing, cynic, or haughty. Um, so uh, any of those that re connect to you, like something that seems fun to play on? Uh, I mentioned that uh, SPG is a thin-skinned mallard, meaning, right. he will, uh, meaning I will never tolerate a provocation. You yeah. provoke him, he will get mad at you. Um, the character that Ray plays is intolerant, meaning nightkins such as orcs and goblins are evil and need to be fought. You will never like if if you have if you meet a nice goblin or a nice orc that tries to like de make a deal with you, you're not having it because they're they're bad by their ni nature. They gotta die, um, according to your character weakness. So <laughs> anything else? So if somebody uh -oh. talks, if somebody talks shit, I'm compelled to fight. Um, if you were a kleptomaniac, you're constantly stealing from within the party in any shop we go into. Like, yeah. Gullible, you guys could be like, oh, yeah, there's a treasure in here, and they could be trapped or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. gullible. I believe everything that others tell me. Uh, it's like uh, uh, overbearing. I always tell others what to do, which a thin skinned one will not be very happy with, I can imagine. Uh, Shadow of the Wild, I never sleep indoors. So I, like, I refuse to sleep in, inside. <laughs> um, I, I like boastful. I like that one. <laughs> boastful, yeah. I always excited my accomplishment. That sounds good. Let's grab that. So yeah, let's grab that one. That will be fun when you get to an end and someone's like, so how good are you? Like, how good are you, really? And you're like, oh, we're so good. There we go. Um, so yeah, and then obviously there is things like spe specifics for uh, for knives and things. We, like, we can always look that up in the rules. We don't need to sit down and take a look at that right now. So I will go ahead and do this. I think I think we are now pretty much set. We have like, we know what we need in order to start playing. Uh, the way the the way leveling up works in this system is basically if you guys role play. Uh, on your weakness, I will like at the end of the session. There are a couple of there's a list of things that we'll go through. Like, did you attend the session? Did you um, try to uh, did you defeat to find a treasure worth more worth more than some uh, certain amount? Did you do something extraordinary? Did you bury a companion uh, in a worthy <laughs> in a worthy uh, funeral? Did you have uh, or or things like did you use your weakness to role play? Um, if you do any of these things, I will give award you with that. Like for each one that you that you do, that did, you will be awarded with a uh, character development point, basically, which you can then put into any of those, your skills and roll a die in that skill. If you roll under your uh, your points in that skill, so if you have, for example, um, uh, Kelly, you, for example, have, as we mentioned, um, you have 12 in evade. And let's say you want to improve your evade skill. You can spend your point, roll a d20. If you roll under 12, 
you have succeeded and your 12 is now upgraded to a 13 permanently. You can never go above 18 in a, well, any of these sets. Um, but you will. But if you reach 18, you get to pick any heroic ability, which is basically like a feat. <coughs> Uh, one of those feats is a th sim very simple. It just increases your hit points, for example. That's the only way to get more life. Uh, and uh, most of these attacks that you will do deal to others, but others will also deal to you, can deal some, like sometimes up to 3d8s of damage. So uh, the world is a dangerous place. Um, right, yeah, I think you also, I re realize, yeah, I think you might, might begin with a spell. Um, or maybe you can do all of these spells. I'm not really sure. I'm just going to take a quick look uh, in the rules and see what I can figure out. Right, so yeah, you, you get to pick. Uh, so there are three. Uh, you get to pick three rank one spells and three magic magic tricks. You can only choose from your school or the general magic category. Do you know which spells? you... Because I know you looked at this list before. Do you know which spells you're interested in, or should we pick that later, or do you want to pick that now? Um. Yeah, let me uh, pick that later because I'm gonna I'm gonna read them right now again because yeah. I did have some in my idea, but if they're rank one, I need to be sure I pick the right one. Then yeah. Um, so then uh, I think we're ready to get going. And as such, I need to. Oh, crap, I'm not ready to get going. Where's my? Hang on. Where is my document for this? I forgot. I forgot to open my DM document. Damn it. Uh, I'm Chris Santa the Bold, right? Let's see. Yeah, you are. I'm Chris Santa the Bold. <laughs> the uh, Bald or the Bold? No, you're you're the Orla bold. Moonsilver. <laughs> what you said that? you said three level one spells. <laughs> yeah, three level one and three basically like hand drips. Um, okay. Ray, you're Orla Moonsilver. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, before we. Uh, I mean, you could you while I take this up. Um, SPG, since you have, uh, uh, since you you have the most, uh, you were you were the re most recent one who played a uh, played D and D. Let's uh, let's hear who who are you? Who am I? Yeah, who's your character? <laughs> I'm a duck, bro, um, and I'm a thin skinned duck. So is that? Uh, <clears throat> it's not provocation in your tone, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I don't have a duck <laughs> voice. <laughs> I don't have a duck voice. I can't. Think of it, so that's not. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. See, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm a duck. Why, why don't you lay a basis for uh, for Ray and Callie on like um, um, on the mallards? Uh, 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 not just the mallards, but just like the, the overall a little synopsis of the world that we're actually encompassing. Yes, uh, I was just finding that document, but hey, I just found it. Perfect timing. Uh, yeah, so the world we're in, um, and uh, I mean, as, as an like game mechanic sense, there is a veil that we will start our adventure in. It's called the Misty Veil. Misty uh, veil. Apart from how the world looks up outside of this veil, there is nothing really written. There's a bit of lore, like for the world itself in general, like how how the world exists, like came to be and things like that but there's no there's no map there's nothing uh outside of this veil so whenever or if if you ever leave this veil um that is completely up to to me as dm to create for you which will be a lot of fun because that's that's the way i prefer uh to to be the dm anyway um but yes the world itself uh so this world was basically it, it's existed for thousands of years um uh, so basically, a thousand years ago, the vile demon Sathmog came into our world. His prophet <coughs> was a village priest named Aser, uh, Asrahel Koth. The demon whispered dark secrets in his ear until his magic grew so powerful that he could open a rift between the worlds and allow his dark master to take physical form. Um, so when this... Uh, with Asrahel Koth, as his herald Sathmog proclaimed, a demon, de demonic realm in the world of humans that lasted two centuries... It was a time of darkness and evil, but also one of incredibly rapid human expansion at the expense of the elder kin, dwarves, elves, giants, and halflings. As the time passed, the opposition to Sathmog grew, until one day a young hero named El uh, Eladane managed to summon the ancient dragons charged with the guarding of the world from demonic influence. Mounted on Dragonback, with, uh, with the elder kin as his allies, 
Eladane finally defeated the demon. The beast was banished into, uh, on a hill in the depth of a forest. As his, but his fin- as his final act, he cast a curse which said uh, he would spread a sickness throughout the world and one day be its undoing. Uh, his herald was captured, but since his master had made him immortal, Eladane's knight could not slay him no matter how hard they tried. Instead, he was imprisoned in a crypt under an island in a lake in a remote valley, guarded by warriors and s- sentenced to remain at their post until the end of their days. So Eladane then founded a new empire based on the worship of dragons and their cleansing fire. His realm expanded and cities were built. The paved roads spread through the wilderness. Soon the elder folk grew wary of humanity's advances and many left. The dwarves buried themselves into the mountains and a new realm underground. Uh, in In the autumn of his life, Eladane started to distrust and fear the dragons who had carried him to victory against Sathmog. To secure his power, the dragon emperor sacrificed part of his soul to forge Um Durman, a magical sword with the power to slay dragons and demons alike. Finally, the humans would be free and independent of primeval beings. When Eladane eventually passed away, the sword was hidden in a crypt, as the dragon priests believed the weapon was too dangerous to be used except in extreme emergencies. Opening the crypt required a special key, a statue split into four pieces one for each direction ruled by the Dragon Emperor. After Eladane's death, a power struggle broke out between his sons, and the Empire took a tyrannical turn. All protests against the Dragon Knight rule were severely punished, and the realm was beset by strife. Finally, the dragons turned their backs on the Empire, which collapsed shortly thereafter. Savage orcs invaded much of the region, and many humans were forced into exile. All that remained from Eladane's reign were the fading words of monks and knights who continued to worship the Immaculate Flame. But legend has it that part of the Dragon Empire survived across the east, uh, across the sea to the far east. <coughs> so, a decade has now passed since humans started returning to the Misty Vale, as they call it, to the lack of, due to the, to the thick haze that covers the valley, drawn by rumor and legend, a riches and lost knowledge from the old dragon-worshipping empire. Equally significant was uh, was that the dwarves of the Kumer Mountains, who for centuries have traded with human settlements, reported that the ferocious orcs, who long domin- uh, dominated the Misty Vale, seemed to be withdrawing. Many adventurers fastened swords to their belts and made their way into the mysterious valley. The settlers with pickaxes and ox-drawn carts were also attracted to, their le- to the legendary site, and you are among them. So you guys have come to the Misty Vale uh, in search of of adventure and uh, maybe even for some of you a new home. Um, so yeah, that's where you, where you end up. So basically, this world has was once ruled by evil demons and then had some uh, evil dragons come in and save them from the demons, but they weren't that much better, I suppose. I suppose. <coughs> so you have on one side the the demons and on the other the, the other the dragons. And in the middle are the common folk, you guys. Uh, so that's the world you inhabit. Okay, <clears throat> a couple questions. Yeah. How do all these races interact? You walk through a town and they're like, they're, there's, there's <coughs> markets. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. a duck standing next to a wolfkin. Yeah. And, okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. So all, like, so, I'm in, trying in to give them a reg- visual is all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in some regions, some of these races are less common. Um, if you go to, if you're closer to the mountains, you will see more dwarves, sure. uh, but you might not see as many elves, for example. Whereas if you're in a, in parts of the woodland realm, obviously the other way around. Uh, the, like, the, like no one really knows where the mallards came came to be, came from into this world. Uh, they just showed up one day, uh, but that was so many generations ago, well, no one really remembers. That's why I'm destined to pe- pierce the veil. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the mallards, if you are unaware, I will bring up a, an image of them because they are. Pretty darn cool. <laughs> um, I hate trolls. I hate trolls. <laughs> so uh, I think like the this image I think best symbolizes the mallards. Oh yeah. Th- basically, mallards are like Donald Duck or Darkwing Duck. Darkwing they are duck. Duck. <laughs> <laughs> they're humanoid yeah. ducks, um, and they're pretty badass. But I will reshare my screen because I think we can then. Uh, get some music in as well yeah but can you can you uh shoot two arrows with your bow like i can probably not 
<laughs> exactly. Probably so no. Hopefully, I'm probably gonna does. gonna trip over a flipper and break my beak. Okay, that's probably what's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, uh, let him let us know in chat if there's some slight music in the background. It should be. You never know. <laughs> I might have screwed things something up. Um, otherwise, it's just it will just be for us, I guess. Um, so yeah. So you all arrive in this veil. Uh, but before we do, yeah. So you're you're a mallard, SBG. Um, tell us more about your character. Uh, I'm a mallard. Uh, I'm thin-skinned. Uh, I hope that wasn't provocation in your voice. Um, no, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, I'm destined to pierce the veil and unravel the mystery of uh, my race. Yeah. Uh, and you are, are a thief. Uh, yes. Or, yeah, that's your job title. Yeah. Profession. Um, like, I'm not calling you a thief, just to be clear. Like, I'm not <laughs> saying you've stolen anything. I'm just saying that like, that's your job. Um, <laughs> borrow things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ray, tell us yes. about your character. I am... <clears throat> let me get in my voice. I am Orla the Moonsilver. I am an elf. My family was attacked by trolls. And I meditate. And I also... I have the ability not to shoot one arrow, but two arrows at the same time. I'm was raised in the tropical forest near the south and my family was attacked for trolls and i'm just looking for adventure and to just seek out my destiny and, yeah. adventure. and you are and you carry the one of the fangs from the troll that yes your sister, yes a of your, yes of your history i yes i'm uh, yes i when i see i i just i meditate and i think about my family and what i need to do and i one day Hopefully, I can get avenge my family. Yeah. Where does that second arrow shoot out of? <laughs> hey, I mean, he knocks two arrows and shoots them twice. Oh, he notches two. Okay, okay. Yeah, two at once. <laughs> um, I mean, you can shoot twice in one round, basically. Um, and Kelly, tell us about Dragon Voss. Well, Dragon Voss, I am a wolfkind. <laughs> Come from the nature, uh, trying to learn more about the about the world. I want to know more. And experience uh, different cities and cultures, and, but uh, I like to go on adventures because I like to uh, share with everybody how great I I have been on these adventures. Okay, Bjorn. So I have a couple questions for you. <clears throat> yep. Do us as adventurers do we know each other? Have we been adventuring for a while together? Uh. That is technically up to you guys to decide, but I would say yes. Um, okay, so let's like, say yes. Like you, 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 like you, like you have entered. You've just entered the Vale, so. Uh, but it's been quite a travel to get here. So obviously, you've met in the like met in a town nearby, maybe. But some, but you can also decide to <coughs> meet each other a long time ago, be childhood friends if you want to. But yeah, you've at least you've met each other a few days ago, um, and then it's been a few days of calm travel throughout uh, throughout the the towards the Vale. So it's up to you guys how you how you want to be, which kind of relationship you want to have in the, uh, to begin with. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm happy with the group, you know, together with a group of fellow adventurers, we're going to travel to Misty Vale. So I'm I'm <clears throat> I'm very happy <laughs> to be traveling with you guys. Yeah, I'm and, excited. And, yeah, and, and you're all like you're all aware of the fact that, you know, obviously there are. Even though you're traveling to on the on the main road and you're traveling to like from a town to another town, this is one of the more dangerous areas in the world. So traveling with like all, all on your own, it's not maybe the best. Like it's not the safest thing you can do. Okay, so uh, so debrief us. What are we What are we actually doing? Obviously, our characters know because they've been on the road together for a little while, but we have no yeah, idea. Yeah. Yeah, so you are you're traveling towards this veil. Uh, you've heard of all the riches. There's even rumors that this is uh, is where the the legendary sword of the um, uh, dragon emperor can be found. The this one of the most powerful artifacts in the world, uh, known known to to any of you through le legends of of bards that you've heard since uh, in taverns since you were you were children. Um, this is also like this veil is uh, used to be very. Uh, inaccessible due to the to the orc uh, infestation of the area, but lately they have drawn, been drawn back, and there are settlers, uh, new settlements in the area. Um, this is what like this is one of the places in the world that has n never been picked clean by adventurers at all before. You look like if you want to find 
you know, and the basis for a a new life, this is the perfect place to do so. But it's also a very dangerous place to do so, of course. Uh, Mallard Duck, do not worry. I have an awareness of 72, and uh, my acrobat is 74. I will do what I can to protect all of us. <laughs> that is good to know. Yeah, Orla, Orla is obviously very uh, agile and... Uh, uh, and. I'm very good with bows. 74 in bows. <laughs> I love uh, he's spot on with his numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so... Uh, let me. I think. I think I have here a little introductory. Um, so, so you like you, you you have heard of the legends of this place. You've heard of the um, of all of the these places. Um, like, but you don't know the details. You don't have a map of the area. You just know that if you follow this road, you will get to the main settlement of the area, and from there you can find. Um, where would you? Uh, SP, yeah, yeah. So, to, I think to pull up your sheet, I think you. Double click the, uh, yeah. So double click the your your name on the left side of the screen. So up here. So if you if I double click my spectator here, we'll just open it up. I can't. I don't have access to any of that. Huh. Yeah, I don't have that either. You guys know yeah. where to go. You gotta. Uh, did you guys go to Let's Roll? That's okay, I, I didn't do. know I was supposed to click play now. Okay, I, yeah. I was waiting to click play now. Gotcha. Yeah. So so click click play now, and then you you can click your name to to open it up, and then you can double like. Click your your like the image. Uh, yeah. you'll double click it. Uh, I can I can only open up my own when I join my, uh, with my spectator, but I can with my like obviously as DM I can open up all of them. I was I was missing part of the equation here. I got to open that up. Is there a yeah, link so you for that? First, um, yes. Hang on. Uh, I think it's. You want me to uh, sing you the link, SPG? Yeah, yeah please. Yeah, and then I'll 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 log I in. I got you because I know I know he's. Doing a lot of stuff, so give yeah, me I have a lot of things, things open yeah. right now. I yeah, let do. me let me send that to you. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna put it in your uh, right here in your Discord. And let's awesome. see, Callie, I'm gonna send you yours as well. Uh, <coughs> uh, there we right. go. Yeah. Uh, so you have been traveling for a couple of days, as I said, together. Uh, you're now um, nearing the uh, a place that you so that, that you how you have been told about called the Drakmar Pass. It's a narrow passage through the Coomer Mountain that leads into the Misty Vale. And there used to uh, be goblins here, or orcs. Yeah, goblins and orcs have goblins. used to used to be like overrun the completely overrun the area. Uh, used to be like basically going here used to be a death sentence, but though in the last couple of of, of months and like in, in the last year or two, there's. They have, have fallen back, and there's, this place is now actually somewhere you can go to without uh, without, without wanting to die. We're approaching um, the pass. We must be mindful. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Um, the ancient and narrow pass runs through the mountains like an axe gash. Steep and moss-covered slopes rise to the snow-laden peaks that can occasionally be glimpsed through the veils of cloud. Somewhere ahead lies the Misty Vale, the legendary place where the empires of old stored their wealth and magical artifacts. It is the rumor of these treasures that has brought you here, the vast riches and arcane secrets hidden among the ruins of the other side of the mountains. And you're not the first to be lured by such temptations. Since the orcs started leaving the area about a decade ago, a growing settler stream of settlers and adventurers have made their way to the Misty Vale. But you know the way is treacherous and fraught with peril. The old imperial roads have crumbled and the mountains are teeming with danger. The Drakmar Pass, where you now find yourself, is particularly infamous. The dwarves of the common mountains have warned that the humans' return has attracted brigands and ravenous beasts <coughs> to the area. Your fears come true when you suddenly hear a disconcerting whimper. You see a figure lying in the middle of the rocky trail, only 20 or so meters ahead of you. The figure is wearing a simple gray robe and clutching a dark bundle to his chest. As the whimper turns into a rattling wheeze, you realize the person is gravely wounded. What would you like to do? Um, <clears throat> don't leave it up to the duck. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to place you somewhere back here. So yeah, ahead of you, as you can see on the, on the screen here, you have, um, uh, you're in a veil, uh, and... Okay, 
Um, and yeah, someone's lying right on I the road to, ahead of you. I try to sneak in and uh, pick through his pockets. I mean, he is dying. Um, <laughs> well, I so. was going to gonna say, don't leave it up to the duck. He's going to put a, a knife in his neck. Don't do that. Don't leave it up to the duck. Maybe the Moon Maiden has something to say. <laughs> or whatever Ray's character. Yeah, or or uh, so Kelly, what do you what do you feel like doing? Uh, what does what does a mage of your stature do in this situation? It just looks like a, it's just a normal person. They don't have any, uh, any weapons on them or anything. Or... Yeah, no, no. It's a it's a uh, it's a person. They they're great. You can notice you notice that they were gravely wounded, and they have they, they, you can see that they're holding something clutched in their chest. They also have and they're wearing a a, a robe, uh, a gray robe. <coughs> but they have no weapons uh, that so you can the, see. They are okay. and they're m moments away from death. So the duck holds his arms out and stops those two, and then looks at them both and asks, uh, "Should we render aid?" Um, I see. As long as as long as it's not an orc or a goblin, I am okay to help this person. But yeah. if it's an orc or a goblin, I would say you need to go cl get closer to yeah. tell who it is. Uh, okay, it's just a hooded figure. That you can, from the sound and uh, and the way he he barely moves, you can tell he's dying. There's also a pool of blood around him. I see. Help the person. I would help them. <clears throat> the duck will do what the group does, but I would also, <laughs> I would probably stick around and listen for the death rattle to stop, and then go search his pockets. But that's just my duck. Yeah, so do and do any of you want to go go up to it to to the man the dying man or do you want to just wait for I him to die for I want to go I want to help okay. I want to help this person I don't want this person to die I want to help this person <laughs> right so you can see yeah the uh, as you move closer you see that it's a pale uh, his pale and panic stricken face and you notice that one of his thighs is pierced by a thick black arrow oh no uh, do you want to do you want to take a look at the wound or Yes, I do. I want to take yeah. a look at the wound. Uh, yeah, it, it, you uh, you know, it, it's clear to, to you right away that this um, this arrow is poisoned. Uh, it's a purple blue streak that branch out from the wound, uh, almost like a you know, it's like like a like if something has cracked uh, in a sense uh, in his skin, uh, and it, it can also the same can also be seen around his eyes and on his face. Uh, he is very clearly die, uh, dying. Dying. And suddenly he sits straight up, his ha and hands you the bundle that he's been hugging, um, and, and stares at you with wide eyes, and with a breathy and fading voice. Says, "Quickly, take it. Lenara will understand. Message from Master Weatherman. Must find all the four pieces. The secrets of the Dragon Emperor." And then he falls over, uh, dead. Oh my god, this is great. This is what I've been looking for. It's an adventure. <laughs> so you, you don't like it, you. You can't see what it is yet. It's just a like it's it's just something something that's almost maybe like big, uh, like 20, 30 centimeters tall, but wrapped in cloth uh, and with strings uh, holding it. <coughs> uh, but before you have time to to open it. Um, you hear a um, a faint thwang as uh, and a uh, black arrow bounces off the rock next to you. Um, so you were as, almost shot in the ass. <laughs> yeah, as you look around, you notice um, you notice two uh, goblins up on the hill with arrows. Oh, somebody don't like goblins. Uh, I with my awareness, I think I turned around really quick. Yep, you, and, you notice uh, this very quickly. Uh, and so, and as, and as uh, Orla Mooch turns around, the rest of you can also, uh, you know, notice that uh, the rock is above you and, and can, can spot the enemy. Uh, so you have two goblins now looking straight, uh, <coughs> straight at you with uh, drawn arrows. Uh, and we will now roll for initiative. The way initiative yes. works here is normally that you would draw, uh, draw from a deck of cards. We're not able to do that, so instead I'm going to roll for you guys. Yes. Um. <coughs> What's up, Rouster? 
Uh, well, we're gonna roll one on? d10, and if you get the same as someone else, we'll just um, re-roll basically. So, initiative roll number one uh, that would be two, and that's uh, for you, Ray. So you're, you will be number two, and we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six up, and then up. Ten. Gotcha. Uh, yes, Rouser. There is. There are ducks in this game. Or like, think Darkwing Duck. Um, but this this ducks in particular, played by SPG, is a thief. So uh, th- think it's like like if if Donald Duck was a fantasy like <coughs> a, a thief in Baldur's Gate. Correct. So I would have snuck up while that man was gurgling on his own shit and stole yeah. everything out of his pockets. And but SPG, I understand. You are number four. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so Ray, you're number I two. Ca- SPG, you're number four. Um, and we'll see which order you get it. Um, Kelly, you're number nine. You'll probably be last. Sounds about right. <laughs> and the goblins, I will take. They will take their turn simultaneously. As number seven, so it will be uh, Ray. You'll 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 be up first. Then we have SPG. Then the goblins, and then Kelly. Now, what? Um... I see my character sheet here. Uh, where's all my weapons and stuff like that? Where it shows all that right. stuff. Right. Yes. Uh, do we have, I think do we have ranged down. weapons, not ranged weapons? <coughs> you have, I think, yeah, let's see here, come back. Did I add your gear? Um, you, have a sl- you have a sling, you have a dagger, a and you have a sling. A sling. Uh, and obviously with sling, you don't. You can just pick up any rock. You don't really need to yep. have, like, arrows or anything else. So, um, so, yeah, so you, you have slings in, a, in which you have a seven, if you want to make a sl- attack with that. Um, the, the, like the, while the slopes are steep, you could also try to get up there to one of them because there's one on each side of you, um, and that would I would say that would require an acrobatics check to get up there. Um, okay. So if you want to go up and, and go into melee, you can do so. Um, and I can uh, reach them then, from what yeah, you're yeah. saying. You can reach them. Uh, it will take you um, maybe one turn, I would say, maybe to get to get to them. Um, so okay, <clears throat> is this very much like D and D? So you've got a action and a movement, <coughs> or is it just one action? Uh, it's you have so you have movement and you have one action. You don't okay. have any bonus actions. You don't have any uh, reactions. Okay, okay. Uh, so wh- wh- what I'll do then? I'll move as um, uh, whichever one's to the left of me. I will move up the terrain yep. as far as I can and then attack with my sling. Right. So. Uh, let's see. You are um, the color blue. I think that's the blue one. No, maybe not. Hard to tell which one is which here, to be honest. Um, but we'll, yeah, I think. Oh, right, so that's what that's you. Yeah. So you you moving up here. Uh, so you want to climb up or uh, with an athletic, athletic six, or do you, you just want to go? Yeah. Up? Yeah, I want to climb yeah. up, get as far as I can close to him, which I can't reach him in the first move. But uh, I want to go as far as I can and then try to sling him. Yeah. So I'm going to get in close and knife him next exactly so what we do then is we roll for acrobatics i think if you just click acrobatics here this should be a roll happening on the screen for you guys okay yep i roll an ac- oh, uh, yep. acrobatic check sorry yeah you did um just so yeah, barely that's... made it so yeah 13 you made it uh, i accidentally clicked as well so but your your click with what we'll go with we'll go with the 13 so you make okay. it you uh, you uh, <coughs> yeah. How do you want to? You want to do it in a, in a specific sort of way, or do you, should you just want to? You know, run I'm a a, I'm a I'm a duck. I waddled my ass up there <laughs> as fast as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So and I'll, I'll there we go. I'll disable that now. You should be able to see the goblins. Um, so yes, uh, you also notice uh, when you climb up, you notice that there is also a, a third goblin, a war rider, just around the. Uh, the turn of the goblin. Is he mounted? He is mounted on a warg. It's a goblin on a warg. Ooh, um, I'm gonna. Can I hit them with my sling from where I am? I would say yes, but with a bane, meaning you will have disadvantage. I don't care. I want to hit the warg. <laughs> I want to hit his mount. Yep, fair enough. If I hit his uh, mount, I'll... maybe it'll toss him. Maybe he'll yep. go down so the I'm... hill. Right. Uh, so now, I've now, add, now added a bane to you. To you. So if you click uh, slings on your head right. sheet, it will roll. It should roll for slings with bane. So we will now pick the highest number of the two. Oh, I failed. Maybe Seventeen. <laughs> I failed horribly. Your rock, uh, your rock just bounces off the uh, off the, uh, the the cliff wall. What a wasted turn! <laughs> I got a snarl, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so. Uh, hang, hang on. One thing that you can do now. I will not. Maybe not advice that you do it because I'm not sure if it's worth it. Okay. You could go for a push. 
that means you basically re-roll with the same bane. So it's not like it's not an easy roll for you to make. Um, because you mean you need to roll under seven and you re- and you would take the highest value okay. of the dice. I'll eat it. I'll eat it right now. Yeah. But it, well, it, it would, you, you could, and if, if you, but you did, could push, you could. I understand. I don't yeah. think they understand what push means, but exactly. explain it during their turn when it comes okay, to yep. them. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, basically, you can push. It means you reroll, but it has a downside to it, and we'll get that to that when when it's uh, applicable to one of you guys. So yeah. So that's your tar- turn done, basically. Um, since you have, you don't have any extra extra actions. What, what you can also do on your turn, if you want to, is you can say, "I'm gonna wait." I'm I gonna let put, out a very like, loud. Be ready for- to. I let out a real loud four-letter quack as well when I missed. Yeah. Quack! Yeah, just saying. <laughs> wow! There you go. Uh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it should be the one. It's hard to do this with headphones on because they rattle around. It should. You, it, maybe what would be more of a... <laughs> Ray, you are up. Orla, you are <clears throat> up. I am very agile. And I have... I, I want to go somewhere high... And, sh- and and I can do the twin shot with my arrows. Yeah. So you can then, uh, you have two options. You either go, um, this is like in a similar thing, you can you can either get, get up high by doing, uh, rolling an acro- acrobatic check to try to climb the wall, cliff wall and get up to, uh, to to the top. Or you can just fire from where you are. You could hit both goblins, but you cannot hit the war rider from where you're standing right now. You, know you can also I, move forward and then hit the war rider with the MB. I think I'm going to stand where I am and shoot them with my arrows because I think I'm that good. Yeah, uh, then let's just take a quick look at how uh, twin shot works. So twin shot. Uh, this is a it's an act- activation skill so or heroic ability. So you would then use three of your willpower points if you want to do this. I will uh, this want to do it. Yeah. Uh, this will by activating this ability when attacking with a bow, not a crossbow. You shoot two arrows instead of one. Roll just once to hit with a bane. Damage is rolled separately. The arrows can be directed at the same target or two different targets. So it will be harder for you to hit, but you will then roll for twice the damage if you if you manage to hit. Uh, let's, and it's, let's let's go for it. Yeah. So the way this works then is we bring down your willpower points by three. Uh, I can do that for you. Thank you. Uh, so you have ten. You, you have ten. You now have th- uh, seven left. Um, and the way to re- restore this is by taking a fifteen-minute rest or taking a turn of rest, and then you roll, restore one d six of. Uh, I would like to it, take the turn of turn yeah. of rest. Uh, but that, that's like a later thing you can do. Like if you run out, but feel like okay. I really need to bring this up, you can say, "Look, all right, I'm not going to do anything on my turn. I'm just going to rest uh, and okay. recover at one d six of willpower points." Got it. Uh, it's I, I think it's more probably most applicable to our lovely mage uh, Kelly. I think you will be wanting to do this every now and then, but possibly. But yeah. So basically, now you roll with I'll add a bane to you. Uh, so you roll for bows. You need to roll under fourteen, and we'll take pick the highest of your dice. So. You can either in your character sheet click both and we'll roll two dice, or you can uh, I, I can do it for you if you want to. Could you do it for me? I yep. feel that you would be very lucky for me. <laughs> oh no, that's a demon. Ah! <laughs> so if you roll a d20 in this game, that's bad because we want to roll, roll as low as possible. So a d20, uh, uh, this is basically a um, rolling a uh, demon, which is uh, rolling, um, you know, the, like rolling a natural one in D&D. Um, I'm just gonna quickly just double check how the, these rules work. Uh, rolling a demon. Um, so yes, first of all, you fail. You you miss your shot. However, <clears throat> this also means your your roll cannot be pushed, so you can't re-roll this. Uh, and demon rolls have additional effects in combat. Uh, which means, let's see here, it's loading the page for me. There we go. Um, uh, where is it? Range combat. Rolling a demon. So, I will now roll a d6. Uh, and one, and there, there are six different v- bad outcomes that can happen now for you. Oh, no. None of this is good. Um, let's see, do I have a d6 prepped? Yes, I do. DM roll for d6. Uh, I'm rolling this behind the scenes, so... Uh, but I can tell you that was five, meaning uh, you accidentally hit a random player, character, or friendly NPC. Roll the damage oh! as usual, including damage bonus. 
logically, uh, I'm sorry, SPD. This is you. This yeah. is going towards. That makes the more, most sense. It's all right. um, so I you can quack out another damage. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can quack out another expletive. That's okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> dear. I'll make it Dark. up for you, darling. <laughs> Lay your hands upon the duck. I will give yeah. you the bill, or you'll give me the bill. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what, what uh, am I rolling oh. for uh, damage now? Since I'm getting uh, wait, wait a minute. I roll oh. for my own damage. What I take, or am I yeah. trying to soak damage? I'm just trying to understand. So, um, Ray will roll for what damage he does. Uh, and based on this, uh, yeah. we will see how many hit points you take. So I'm just going to find the. So the one of his arrows of found a home in my ass. <laughs> Basically, Wonderful. yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Woo! Uh, there we go. Uh, longbow, <laughs> two handed. Um, so we. Oh, dear God. It's a D12. Um, <laughs> oh, you just murdered me on the initial. <laughs> Uh, since I since, <laughs> since we're doing, like since this is the first <laughs> session, uh, normally this would include the damage bonus for agility for this character. I'm gonna Please say no. <laughs> we don't do this this time uh, because it's uh, it, like it, it, it doesn't feel fair. Um, so yeah, I will I uh, I will roll one d12 here. I, I I will no longer be the duck that runs out front. <laughs> I'm gonna be the one behind going, yeah, good shot. <laughs> Is this so how we play BD3? Yeah, it's, it's happened. <laughs> uh, that's Sorry, a 10. Ray. Oh, for Ray. Okay. That's a 10 of damage. Yeah, uh, and I've got how many hit points? You have 14. So you're down to 4. Holy shit. That, hang on. Oh we my must be god. Something here. Yeah. Yeah. We must be missing he, something. Hang he on. mortally fucking wounded me. <laughs> <laughs> the duck went. <laughs> I didn't meditate hard enough. I'm sorry. I didn't meditate, I w I didn't meditate hard enough. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Hang on. I I gotta double check. Like, is it this powerful? <laughs> this feels. Ray. This feels so <laughs> dangerous. And I'm gonna shoot you in the butthole. <laughs> hey Kelly, we're having uh, we're having duck soup later at the camp. <laughs> yeah, you are, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> like, Remember, if you happen to reach my body, kiss my ass. You're gonna have to <laughs> get in there. <laughs> Shit. Right. So it can be decreased by armor, though. Do you have any armor? <laughs> Me? I think I have leather. No. I think. Yeah. Okay. No? So leather. Uh, leather means. Uh, I think you have leather as well. Yeah. So that means you take one less damage because it's okay, basic so damage nine? reduction. So yeah, nine points of damage. Nine out of fourteen. <laughs> I can survive so, with five. <laughs> yeah, so five hit points left. Five on it. Yeah, well, this is <laughs> wow. dangerous stuff. Um, wow. I'm gonna get so yeah. I, the arrow flies. A pebble at, bro. So, 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 yeah. So so basically. Um, I'll do Billy next time. Yeah, Sorry. So one of the arrows, like uh, one of the arrows, miss um, completely, but the other one miss even even worse. Um, instead of f firing at the goblin on top of the hill, it heads straight into the. Um, to the behind of the mallard. Yeah, and what's your name, Ray? What's your character's name? Orla. Orla. Oh. Moonsilver. Orla! What the hell? Grabbing the <laughs> arrow that's sticking out of the duck's ass. Hey, I, I, Moon, you, you showed me your moon and, uh, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and now it's the goblin's turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn Now it. I die. Oh, <laughs> now damn. I die. Oh, Go for not. the duck. Go for the duck. Uh, so the uh, the goblin scout obviously has a hard time of reaching um, uh, reaching Bjork uh, Bjork because Bjork is on his way up the uh, the hill. Uh, however, they fight. Uh, there is an archer down there who just fired an arrow towards him, so he's firing an arrow back. <laughs> um, so with his short uh, with his short bow, he is firing. Does the goblin uh, feel sorry for me for getting shot by my own man? In the, uh, the goblin feel the goblin feels uh, feels like oh we have a teammate nice um, <laughs> <coughs> we're still gonna kill him and eat him but that's yeah, fine yeah. Uh, the arrow flies just uh, just by uh, like a few centimeters like, like maybe maybe like a hand uh, away from your uh, left ear uh, and hits the the rock behind you uh, the goblin on the other side. Does the same thing. 
Uh, this, however, is firing towards the the other person standing next. Roll a demon and fall down the hill. Oh no, he he did that with some finesse. Success. Shit. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. And they rolling Precision. a <laughs> precision. Wow. So Kelly. Yes. Um. Uh, you take one point of damage. Dragon Voss uh, gets an arrow uh, in the knee. Oh! <laughs> you used to be an adventurer like the others, but now you have an arrow through your knee. It's it, it doesn't hit like go into your knee, it just grazes it slightly, um, but it still hurts like shit. Um, you take one point of damage, uh, and for those the, like uh, the rest of you, you haven't only you had I mean, you had you only were aware, were of the two goblins. Ahead of you, and suddenly a goblin cuts uh, a, go a warg slides around the corner. Oh uh, my goodness! With a goblin on top, and uh, heads uh, stops just bef uh, ahead of the the dying man, and uh, and the uh, uh, the the warg takes a rips his head off, uh, straight off, uh, and growls at you. Uh, he doesn't do anything else though. Um, he just can't reach. Does he, he got a bit of drool coming down his face? Oh my god. Exactly. <laughs> he got a bowl of water! <laughs> the, the goblin top of his screams. Uh, and, uh, and we now take a look at what Dragon Voss is up to. So have you picked your spells? Because I think this uh, Yeah, I'm putting them in. I was putting some of them in as you as you guys were doing here. Oh, perfect, man. Uh, so you have Foresight <laughs> and Levitate so far. Uh, you have one yeah, more that's going to get long strider next. Okay, so what would you like to do? Um, well, it seems like all I can do is probably run up to one of them and, and try to attack him with my dagger. Yeah. Um, obviously, the warg is getting kind of close. Uh, the others are up the hill, so you, you can definitely go up to the... Don't the worry, the guy with five fucking hit points, he's going to focus on the warg again. Don't worry. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you're going for the work. Okay, yeah, I'll go for the work. Sure. Yep. Okay. Oh uh, man. So uh, I would say then uh, let's roll for. Uh, so you can either roll roll yourself, or you can, or you can, uh, or you can click hit it for you. But yeah, click just click where it says knives uh, in the character sheet, and it will, the dice will roll. Uh, in com in gear, or uh, in skills. Skills. Nice, there it is. Wow. Uh, so that's wow. an 18. However, you can push this. Uh, if you push, you will become dazed. And uh, that means from now on, any agility checks you do until you have a, uh, um, a short rest will be at a disadvantage. Uh, that means you get to roll again and use that roll instead. Because uh, right now you're missing. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, so I'll, I, I've done... Uh, all right, so... Uh, all right, um, so, sorry, it's not a guild check. So you will have a bane, meaning a disadvantage, to any strength check until the next time you, re uh, you, you rest. But you can click your knives again and re-roll. Oh, yeah, I'll do that, because I don't have anything for strength, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's your dump, dump stat. Like, being <laughs> being based for you is like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you mind? You are now... Like, again, then? Yeah, yeah, you all... But, but like, so... Um, like you slash towards it, um, but, but uh, get a bit um, something about it, uh, like, uh, some, like you almost trip over a little bit. Uh, you you find your footing and, and slash again, but you feel a bit a bit dazed of uh, from the uh, from the situation. And also, this is a this is like this is not what you signed up for. You came here for to okay. travel for rich, not fight some yeah, like, attacking so, some goblins. Out, in yeah, out, out <laughs> of game, out of game for a second. Yeah. Explain to us our motivation. Who hired us? What the hell are we here doing? Um, no one hired you. Just, you, you. We're just yeah, you, treasure hunters. Yeah, like, like you, you, um, like you, you. None of you are very rich. You don't have a lot of money. Um, and finding it, like finding a job is, like, finding a, like for you, it was like, fight. Do we, do I try to find a job that will pay like shit, or do I try to go to the Mister Vale and find some treasure and become a rich adventurer? Well, one of those seemed better. To you guys, so you decided to until go until right now when you're when yeah. you're when, right when your now teammate I fully... shoots an arrow into your ass. Yeah, I mean if you if you're second guessing your choice life choices right now, I would <laughs> yeah. get it. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, All so right. so yeah, you click uh, you just click knives again and we'll re-roll <laughs> and see what you end up with this time. <coughs> uh, oh, 
<laughs> oh, that's so close. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, you, 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 so you stumble um, <coughs> uh, in the, it's, it's a bit slippery almost where you're standing right now, but due to the blood from the, uh, from the hooded figure who died before. Uh, so you stumble a bit in the, um, uh, in the blood, but you do, uh, so even though you, you swing your knife around, uh, you do you miss slipped the in the viscera. <laughs> <laughs> you're still on your feet. And we're now back to our mallard bork. So you're you're now on top of this hill. Uh, you can go into melee if you want to. Go out like a soldier. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, well, since he's dealing with the uh, the warg there, I'm gonna just trudge up the hill and knife that bastard. Because oh, uh, so well, scared. I mean, I, I'm probably moving more slowly and I'm leaving a leaky trail behind me. But um, I'm definitely gonna stab this guy with my knives. Yeah. Let's go for it. All right. So I would be rolling four. Um, so just click knives in your <coughs> knives. That's right. Skills. That's right. All right, I got to get under a fourteen, baby. Knife this prick. Yes, you do. Woo! So oh, a knife. Why did it roll two dice? I take the lowest one. No, no, no. So, yeah, right. You don't have a bane anymore. Sorry, that was me. Uh, I forgot to remove your bane. Okay. Yeah, no, that was a nine. Um, so a knife has. I did put this in. No, I did not. Did I? Nope. Uh, hang on, I'll just take a look at the knife stats. Now, is there a uh, is there a, a body hit chart, or you just say where everything goes and? Uh, you like in general, I would say like um, you can basically like uh, if you deal a lot of damage, I'll let you choose. If you deal a little damage, I I might choose for you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you roll a d8. However, you will then also add your um your a guilty bonus, which is another d6. So you roll one d8 and one d6. Uh, I can. Put that in. Yeah, just roll them for me. I don't even see the dice to select. I see yeah, all the little... stats I can click on. I just don't yeah, see the I'm dice. Sure how to, to bring that up for you guys, but I have a like a, a hot bar that I have down here that I can. Uh, okay. So one d eight at first. Come on, damage! Woo! So that's three. I took more in my ass. That sounded horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Plus 1d6. Uh, so there's a total of 5 damage. 5 damage. Probably to his big toe or his hand. I'll take it though. Whittle him down. I'm just going to check if it adds anything. Yeah, so that's... Uh, so yeah, so your, your knife um, uh, goes straight into the, um, to the stomach of the goblin. Uh, and gashes up a, a big wound to his uh, right side. He's very, he's very wounded, but he's still, uh, still, still able to fight for a little bit more. Well, I, I want to spill enough guts. I put him at a disadvantage for moving because he'll slip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. Um, so, and before before the goblin has time to react, um, Orla is uh, ready to to move again. Um, do you want to knock another arrow, or do you want to? No, don't shoot towards I mean, me. You can shoot at so, at, so, at something else, like the <laughs> warg and the, uh, the other goblin as well. Don't think about it. I'm holding the arrow in my ass. Uh, Trying <laughs> to pull it out. <laughs> no, that's enough. Go lay down. Ray. How you want to do this, uh, Millie? Melee attack. So, at, at which one? I would say the warg is probably the better ones, but because uh, otherwise you need to get to get up the hill. Yeah, I, I could use some help. I'm gonna go I, since yeah, since you could. my fellow since my fellow partner is down. I am going to go dragon nothing. boss. He's notching an arrow. Lay down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Ray. Oh, <laughs> I no, just no, wanted no. to give him a warning. <laughs> so your but you know what? Here. But hold on, I d don't. I have a torch in my inventory. You do. Oh shit! <laughs> so you have a torch. You have a knife and a longbow. Oh, we haven't worked. I dinner? want to use the torch, <laughs> Bruno. Okay, yeah, go for now it. Now we're talking. Um, is there any stats for torch? Hang on, I'm gonna double check if there is. Don't worry. I'm going to help you. 
with my torch. Dragon oh. boss. So, yeah, so you light your him. torch. Yes. Um, He's covered in fur. I just want you to know that, Ray. Yeah, he, <laughs> he is. He has a fucking torch out, and his buddy's in, covered in fur. <laughs> I, I'm torching him. Uh, so here. Can be used as a melee weapon. Oh, you hear the dog whimper David, and you're like, do you smell that? Ray should charge in and butter. Shut up, David. So that's a small club uh, in dam uh, equal to a wooden club in damage. I smell uh, which crispy wolf mean... <laughs> I mean, so it's one d8 of flaming damage if you hit. Uh, so this would then go under. I would say, uh, is it staves or is it brawling? Um, because it didn't say. Uh, I would say you can either you can either use like do you want to so like do you want to attack? Uh, like what, what's your goal with the attack? Do you want to attack the, the warg or the goblin on top of it? Uh, first of all, I want to go take out what's underneath them. So I'm going to take out the okay. war. I would say you can use the, your um, your staves um, uh, staves attack inside then and I'm going to give you a boon because you are, like the war is big and right. and very flammable right. and you are also <laughs> like, it also it is also slightly busy um, yes. with the other one. So yeah. So uh, yeah, hit, let's roll for staves I would argue with okay. uh, So explain uh, what that is. So staves is basically. I mean, it's 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 basically. I mean, he's holding a st wooden stake that's on fire. Right. Um, a wooden so, stake. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. there's there's yeah. a, a weapon skill called staves. Staves. Like, yeah. Staves. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. like bludgeoning with a, bludgeoning. With a wooden okay. stake. Yes. Like, I feel like yes. like I feel I like either that by... or yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's it's like that hammers or brawling. You know, because I'm I'm not sure which this fits in uh, with these staves. Um, gotcha. So you want, do you want me to click it for you, or do you want to do it yourself? No, you click it for me, yeah. please. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, you can push this if you want to. I would like to push, push, yep. reroll, push, push. push you it. will now have a bane on str push strength checks from now on, uh, but you get to click uh, roll again. And that's a natural one. Woo! That's the dragon. Yeah! Yes. Yeah! So, that means that you did that with finesse. Like, the best thing that you, like, like uh, whatever you were trying to do, you did it expertly. <laughs> In a sense. Exactly. So, rolling a 1 uh, means you're particularly successful. This is called rolling a dragon. In combat, a dragon roll has specific effects, increasing damage. The track rolls, for example, outside the combat, the DM uh, decides. So, let's just take a look at... Um, so, many the combat, by rolling a, a dragon when you attack, you score a critical hit. This means that a dragon roll is required to parry or dodge the attack. Uh, it, this one can't dodge. Um, and that you may choose one of the following effects. You will either get to roll the double amount of dice for the weapon damage before adding any damage bonuses uh, or any other bonuses. For example, if you get a critical attack a hit with a broadsword that damages that deals two d6, you will instead uh, roll four d6 plus the bonus. You could, uh, or you could immediately perform a secondary attack against another enemy as a free action, or you can say ignore all armor. Uh, the guy just like I think I I feel this attack already ignores armor, so uh, damage might be a good good option here. I will go with the last option, please. So the the additional attack or the damage? Damage. Let's do damage. damage. Yeah. So uh, th this is one d eight, meaning you will two deal two d eight of damage, and then we'll add one d four as a bonus to that. So yeah, let's just roll. I think I had a d eight here somewhere here. Roll it for me. Yeah. I'll roll. Rolling, 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 rolling. Come on, come on, come on. One two d eight. Oh, I put my tricks in for you as well. So that's a total of f uh, five damage plus another d4. Yes. Uh, which I had somewhere here. No, I didn't. Um, five and a d4. One d4 roll. I think I'm eating crispy warg tonight. I hate rolling a d4. Oh, one. <laughs> yeah, it's I hate, I hate rolling a d4. One. <laughs> they are. Yeah, so that's a total of six damage. However, yes. this is a very flammable and furry one. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you you hit the uh, uh, the wolf with the with the torch, 
and you hit it hard. Um, Does it explode like a sock? Just, Sorry, just like, like the flames just, go around. It's like shooting an arrow in a mallard duck's ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 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 on my end, we're not talking about me, right? We're talking about the <laughs> yeah, the war got yeah. lit on. But okay, okay, okay. The, wolf, the, wolf <laughs> catches the fire. fire. The, catches, the fur catches fire. Yes, uh, that's what I wanted to do. I see if there is any mention of how fire, like what happens if you're on fire. Um, let's see here, dude. No. That I can tell. Uh, yeah. So let's. Uh, yeah. I mean, let's go with the part with like the effects of a fireball. Then, um, so each each turn that this wolf is on fire, it will take one uh, like the equivalent of a fireball of the at level one, meaning it will take two d six of damage each turn uh, until this is put out. That's my. Uh, so this thing engulfs into flames. It's an animal, so it would be scared. And there's a goblin on his back. What happened? <laughs> exactly. So he takes uh, five plus five ten to so twelve damage in total this turn. Woohoo! Boom! Roasted doggy. Uh, the wolf howls, uh, and the goblin looks very, very angry. Um, so, the, uh, the, the, the goblins will act next, and we'll begin with the one next to, uh, to Bjork, uh, the Bjork. So he draws his short sword and slashes towards you, um. Oh! But he slashes wide. Uh, he, he, I don't know if he assumed you were, like, that the duck was higher than, like, Taller than a duck is, but he slashes way above your head. However, on the other side, a an arrow whooshes down towards uh, the combatants below. <laughs> and uh, careful, this is those completely... arrows hurt. <laughs> Still holding <laughs> yeah. under the water. An arrow flies like, um, like wide of uh, maybe maybe a maybe five feet above your head. And uh, smashes it into wow. the cliff. It's like it's like the goblin couldn't decide if he wanted to fire towards the duck on the other side of the hill or uh, amongst the people below. Uh, however, the the warg is classified as a monster, and monsters have monster attacks. They work a bit differently. So I will I have a list of six different actions. Um, so the second person roaster is uh, Kali, Kali Druvos. Uh, we have added a the, a picture of the of a uh, wolfkin the character that he's playing. Um, so I will roll a d6 on my end, and that will decide what happened, which action they take. The warg does uh, does a ferocious pounce against um, uh, against uh, the the one f like against um, uh, Orla, who's I mean just hit the warg with a flame stick. Uh, the warg wolf is pissed and, and pounces at you. Dealing two d eight of bludgeoning damage. For total twelve. This game does not hold back. No, um, this thing's gonna gonna kill you. <laughs> but it's all yeah. You you go from your fifteen hit points. Wow. Down to, to five in in minutes <laughs> by your own. No teammate. no no. Not even no, five. No, no. I'm just Three. No, no. <laughs> wow. Uh, so yeah, this wolf is dangerous. It's also on fire, uh, which is not great for it. Um, but I'm gonna roll a d6 and see if that fire spreads. It, it does pissed not. You pissed him off real good, uh, and now the wolfkin is up. So, Kelly, what do you want to do? Um... Shoot, man. Uh, I mean, if I may, if I may add a suggestion, yes, something you could do is using your magic. I yes. mean, you don't have any like combat spells uh, out of the three th three uh, spells and the three tricks you've picked, 
But I mean, technically, levitation, you can levitate yourself or another person or object uh, up to a human size, let it float up to six meters in any, any directions after, we, uh, after it gently lands or drops to the ground on your decision. Just saying, you can do that. Right, but the question is, though, is what is the bane because he's going to be unwilling? Right, the bane is basically you will roll with a disadvantage. Okay. Uh, so, so like your options are basically you can keep attacking the wolf, or you can use levitation, for example, on 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 any of them. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll try to levitate. Uh, can I levitate this goblin off to the right and drop him on top of his buddy? The, on top uh, of the. Yes, you can. So. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just to go, just to show you, like this is the the beauty of. Uh, um, of this sort of thing. So yeah, so just just click mentalism in your secondary skills uh, in the skill list, and we'll see if you succeed. And again, any role that's not a, a demon can be pushed. So if you fail it, oh, oh you succeed hard, easily. <laughs> nice. So uh, yeah, how do you want? Um, let, let, yeah, let's see here how what it says about uh, on mentalism. Um, but yeah, I think you can pretty much just like within the definition you can describe how you want to do this uh so you you ge you have a g gesture and a word that you say um as a like that's a requirements here so you 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 gesture something with your hands and you say some sort of spell word um you can decide what it is uh, okay and it will float um six Should meters be. in other directions including slightly up so yeah you can definitely you, you could like drop it basically on top of the the you guys or the wolf um in, in theory Oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick him up and I'm going to drop him right on top of the. And I wave my hand and I say, up. <laughs> yeah, so you, you wave your hand and you Why say, up. Why couldn't you suddenly... have went after the goblin up here? Oh! <laughs> and suddenly the goblin on the, on the far side uh, starts, like, he, he starts, like, trying to run, but he, his feet are just um, falling off and he just goes hey, up in the air. Gonna... Rock show without the rock. Um, let's see if I can find some sort of like how do fall damage work? Oh God! Fall. He takes fall damage uh, from a f from a height of like yeah. Here we go. Um, so falling on hard surfaces inflict a number of d sixes of the bludgeon damage equal to half of the height of the fall meet falls in meters rounded down. Um, so. Yeah, so that's a um, what's it? So six meters, and I would argue that it's maybe another six meters. So it's twelve. Yeah, I would, so hang on. Uh, so that's three d sixes of damage. Uh, this guy will take. That's pretty good. <laughs> anything we're talking anything from three to eighteen damage coming in right now. Yeah, ten damage. Uh, Good job. And I would argue that getting, like, so the, the goblin falls down and falls far and hard. Uh, so I'm Did actually he gonna break add... any bones? Did I hear a little goblin arm go snap? Uh, okay, so um, obviously the wolf, uh, the wolf rider takes and takes one point of damage as well. Um, but yeah, this goblin floats up in the air. Uh, and suddenly <laughs> drops, drops. Oh, look at him go! And like, try, like he, he, he always tries to swim, and like he flails around, like uh, and screams, "Ah, ah, put me down!" Um, at which, one, okay. which point, uh, <laughs> at some point, he gets his will and falls straight on on top of the flaming wolf. Um, yes, and he falls on his neck. The neck just breaks. With a <laughs> uh, you can hear the crack of the, of his Good neck job, breaking, Kelly. Uh, and he's. He is dead. Nice. Um, and we move over to SPD. Well done. You've bested your first kill. Hey. Uh, and you can, like, the... Like, deep inside, you can f almost feel the, um, the primal wolf part of you, like, thirst for, for the violence. And we'll just tell everybody that I threw him real hard. 
<laughs> With my yeah. brute strength. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Because you, yeah, you, oh right, yeah. You are. Uh, your weakness is um, that you are uh, boastful. So yeah, like you, you can also like. I mean, in your mind, you can all already see this story evolve. <laughs> yeah. When you retell it that, uh, in a tavern in a couple of days, you like it will have been uh, not only a goblin but a troll, and it will have been been like for my. You dropped like threw it out ten feet in the air and just crashed down on uh, on on spikes or something like that. <laughs> uh, your mind starts already starts ticking on how you can spin this story into being making you seem even more amazing than you. Um, maybe is jerking an arrow out of a duck's ass an action? No, no, I, I would say that's a reaction. <laughs> no, no, that arrow is stuck in that ass. Sorry, uh, that's, I would say I would argue that's a reaction. Uh, I'm very hurt. good when I'm sticking arrows in the ass. All right, well, are, raise but, uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can pull it out if you want to. That's I would argue that's a free action. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> so when it's my turn, that's what I'm doing. I'm it's jerking your turn now. arrow out. All right. It's I'm your pulling, turn now. I'm pulling the arrow out, and I'm going back in for some more knives. I don't know uh, if I have a bane because I've been shot in the booty. No, uh, not anymore. All it's right. The... So I'm going to use my knives here, and I'm going to uh, try to get uh, a yeah, dragon. Yeah, for agility. Boom! Oh, nice. And I did. It's another... Dragon roll. Wow. Uh, that means you will roll um, so two d8s this time plus a d6 of uh, extra damage. So your damage is seven. Uh, seven plus four for a total of 11 damage. Uh, two, uh, we should also be mentioned this goblin. He only had four health, HP left. Yeah, so, so did I disembowel him? <laughs> how, yeah, I was just going to say, how do you want to do this? Yeah, well, I already I, I already stabbed him once and opened him up. I think I'm going in for a second round and spill his intestines out onto his feet. So yeah, you, you, you I'm knife, an evil duck, or, or yeah, not a knife, nice duck. Uh, your knife slides, slides <laughs> gashes hot, uh, deep and fast across his entire chest. And, you can, and he falls to his knees, and his like, intestines just... Falls out on on uh, into his hands and he looks at them but, no. before he falls over uh, and uh, hit, with it and f loses his last breath. Awesome. So two goblins felled. Well I, done. I, I toss the arrow uh, back to my companion. <laughs> uh, I got to I got to make a phone call real quick. Yeah, no worries. Uh, and as you do, we move on to the flaming torch wielding. Elf standing in front of the war rider. All right. So now, what I want to do, because I know in my inventory, I do have iron head arrows. Yes, you do. And so I want to redeem myself from shooting my fellow uh, companion in the ass. And I want to take another shot at a goblin. Uh, I mean, the only, the, only, the only one left now is a war rider. The, then let's let's take them out. Yeah. Yep, so roll out. for bow. I I burnt his I I flamed his burnt his ride. Now I want to take him out. Yeah. So just uh, so you so you draw your knock your arrow. You draw your bow and let's see if you hit. Ray's uh, doing some damage out here on the battlefield today. Woo! Come on. Yes. That's yes. A hit. Mm. Meaning I got to double check. Uh, yeah. That'll take the damage. That's a one d the one d twelve of damage. Uh, yeah, I have a d twelve twelve here. Plus, uh, we should probably also switch to the combat music. I realize. So yeah, that's eleven. Plus your agility bonus, which yes. is a d six. D six. A one. So that's twelve points of damage. Uh, Bam! And going ahead, in, so you shoot at a point blank range, and all I can say is, how you want to do this? How you want to kill this guy? Shot through the heart. In your... <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, obviously you're at point blank range, um, so when like you draw your 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 bow, to you got to understand that these beasts killed and wiped out my family i have rage in my heart yeah I, so I so you yes what yeah, do you sound like when you get mad 
<laughs> but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so you, 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 your arrow, your arrow lets loose, um, going through the neck of the wolf and straight up into the heart of the goblin, who falls yes. over, uh, and both of them are dead on the ground. Yes. And with that, the <laughs> valley is seemingly clear of danger. Woohoo! Good job, team. Good job, guys. <laughs> Good job, guys. I'm sorry, I'm a female. Good job, boys. Come here. Both on the butt. Come here and uh, heal me. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, heal me. <laughs> so, yes. Um, yes, so uh, with the with the battle now, uh, now over, you can tend to your wounds. And uh, you might also want to take a look at what it is you actually found on the... Um, the music's getting loud. Yeah. Um, I love it. It, it, it was a crescendo, though. Triumph. It was, yeah. it was just, a crescendo. Yeah. It was yeah. a triumph. <laughs> so, you have... Uh, I mean, you intend to your, to your wounds. Uh, I would argue that the, probably the best what, the best thing you should do... I mean, not, none of you are mortally wounded. It's, it's, it's just flesh wounds at the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> I took nine were, damage out I of 14! Really, Who are you joking? Thing. Here's the thing. I am really sorry that I shot you in your ass. <laughs> Uh, That's um, Doug. I'm really sorry. I'm, oh, I'm hey. so sorry. <laughs> so here's the thing: the the way the healing and resting works uh, okay. is, um, so you can either take a a stretch rest, a stretch. So there, there's three units of time in this game. You have the a round, which is a combat round. It's a couple of yes, it's a BG3 music, David. Uh, this is uh, the instrumental version of uh, Down by the River. Um. So, awesome. so, so you have you have a round, which is just a sing, uh, a couple of seconds, a single round of combat. You have a stretch, which is about fifteen or so minutes, uh, and then you have a shift. A shift is um, basically, I think there's like six shifts in a. What do I get uh, back from doing a stretch? So, from doing a stretch of rest, um, you will heal one d6 of HP. Or two six d6 of HP if someone is, is tending to you and succeeds with a heal, healing roll. Okay, uh, uh, but Ray, if you do, the caregiver cannot rest during the same stretch and can only heal one person during the rest. If you do a shift rest, you will just be like you know you recover all all your damage. Uh, period. Well, That's it. what I contend is that while Ray uh, while uh, Olga is that your name? Ol Olga, what what's uh, your name? Is it's Ola. 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 La or La Moon Silver. <laughs> okay, Ola Moon Silver was tending to me while I was uh, stretching. So, so if you take a, uh, so yeah, uh, so basically, Excuse say me? since uh, me? I mean, both both of you are quite damaged. Um, that sounds so it sounds sensual. It's not right. Yeah. So uh, I do want to Dragon Ball. I do want to make mention that I do need to pop off here in a little bit. Yeah. So you pick up uh, my son. Yeah, no worries. Um, so uh, Dragon, you you have you you just damaged one point of damage. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So, so you maybe don't. <laughs> so maybe you don't need to uh, to focus on that much on healing. But the other guys should probably <coughs> heal up. Um, yeah, these spells don't seem to take anything so far. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, you yeah. So you have lost some. Um, right, you you did lose some three willpower points. Uh, I oh, I did. Okay. Add to that. Yeah, I forgot to add that. That's not too bad. Mm. Just yeah, want to no, let you all. know when I did shoot that last. Uh, person i was holding the chief of the troll that killed my sister yes you were so that gives you know strength yeah sorry so um but uh, I, I would argue since kelly has to run soon and i do want to go over the how uh, the experience part because that's uh that's part of how um part of the game as well um i would say that we uh, next time we will begin by you he guys healing um and we will instead just take uh i will let you let you instead have a look at the um, the the bundle of of things that you got from the dying man before the combat. Um, oh, nice. So when you open it up, um, no, the, the teeth <laughs> of the troll that killed his sister. Um, so when you open it up, you notice like um, like within this bundle, there's two objects. One You're talking is about the one that the old dead man was clutching. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that that he gave to you and and, yeah. and talking about. So within this. Is a map of the Misty Vale, um, and I will give that to you next time. Uh, 
And in the four corners of the map, there is four pieces of a statuette depicted. Um, and the other item is a piece of a statuette uh, depicting a pedestal, lower legs, and the bottom part of a sword, likely from a basalt statuette of a, hum of a humanoid warrior. Uh, and if any one of you wants to, you can roll for... Um, uh, let's see, it's a... I know uh, I heard that myths, wrong. Myths and Legends. <laughs> um, so roll for myths, myths, all, of, all of you, roll Myths and Legends. I would like to do the roll. So yes, I will hit roll for you, for you then. So you need to roll under six. That's wow. a fail. Yeah, I saw uh, Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ray, you succeed. Nothing. Boom! Boom, baby! The so Ray succeeds. Uh, your fate and Dragon Voss. Uh, let's see here. I may be a duck, but I'm blind as a bat. <laughs> uh, let's see if you... I, and I, I don't let's trust... See. I'm just saying I really don't trust the mallet duck. <laughs> you better not. So, <laughs> Ray, what I got Ray realizes is that, that the legend speaks of a... Uh, like the the key to find the, 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 the most legendary sword of the entire um, the entire world, essentially the the dragon uh, the dragon emperor's sword, the one that could slay demons and dragons alike. That is rumored to be hidden somewhere in the misty veil. The legend says you need a stat uh, the, the key to open the open the vault. Which what is, are you looking at, Orla? Statuette. I'm woozy. And I can't now, see it. You, you recognize this as most likely one of those four pieces. Uh, meaning you now hold one of the four keys <laughs> to one of the most powerful swords in the world. <laughs> this is my matter. destiny. This is what I dreamed of when I was a young female elf back in my village. Adventures. We must find the... We must do this and go, like, find the pieces and go on this adventure. Yeah, so I will do this now instead. Um, They're all variations of Fat Bastard. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, what's ne r r r what we have left to do before we uh, round this out and let Kelly go and pick up his son is the experience part, um, which is basically handled like this. So... Did you participate in the game session? Yes, you did. You all did. So that you can all mark for yourself in, in your uh, like somewhere. Uh, one point. Uh, did you explore a new location? I would argue, yes, you explored the yes. uh, the valley. Yes, so that's a two. Um, and then did you defeat one or two uh, more dangerous adversaries? The I would say the goblins don't count. But they the don't. war rider counts. Well, Ray almost took one the duck out. He's a uh, yeah, yeah, that, that as well. That's pretty close. Um, <laughs> did you ob uh, overcome an obstacle without using force? No, you did not. Did you give in to the, your weakness? No, you did not. Um, however, uh, so that but that leaves you with three points. What you now can do is you can mark like in in all of any of your skills. So if you take a look at here, dragon uh, dragon boss uh, here. So in all of these skills, you can now mark any of these boxes. Three of these boxes you can all mark, okay. and then okay. you basically roll that skill. Um, with a w just without any boon or anything else, so you we just mark roll three. We select, yeah, three. so you mark three and you roll, and any roll you succeed will bring boost that up to one, uh, up by one point. So, this is a way you can get better in this game. Um, so you like, but each session will get one, maybe five, and then I points. roll each one of those, yes. You can put, <coughs> like roll one and then I roll another the demon. Point what does that mean? Uh, it just means you you fail. Like, in this case, demons don't, doesn't really do anything. I think dragons might give you an extra point. Um, so yeah, healing. Uh, that's also fail. Yeah. And then. <laughs> hey! Hey! I got Bluffing. Right. I would, uh, and uh, since I'm the DM, I will uh, like I. I I don't want to go into the rules and double check this. I, I just feel like feel like this is the fun thing to do. Can, if you, I would argue, if you roll a demon on a specific, so you can't try that skill again this turn, but, you, but that's fine. Okay. That's basically it. Uh, but if you roll <coughs> a dragon, which you did now, I would say instead of going up by one, you go up by two points. So bluffing, awesome. right? Yep, it was. bluffing is what I got the dragon in. Yep. So yeah, so then we basically uncheck these boxes for you, and then we. <laughs> I'm just glad British ducks are change. getting representation yeah. in the game. So bluffing, is, your bluffing has gone from a ten to a twelve. Amazing. Oh, that's pretty good. Good. Yeah. 
Uh, and and keep, remember, when you get to 18 in, in any of these, you get a, hero, a, a heroic feat. Tell you, I need to get slings up to about 10, and then I can get under 10 probably. But yeah. under 7, that's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, so, Dragon Boss, which, uh, Kelly, which ones do you want to go up in? Uh, I up. am, I, you know, I think yeah. I'm going to do Mists and Legends. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I, uh, some of these, um, I, I think, I think technically some of these will require, uh, a, like, a, well, you can also do it in, in, in later down the line. If, so, if you meet Callie, the, frame, the, the, yeah, the, uh, yes. the hard part about choosing this is this right here, okay? Uh, you have to roll under, you have to succeed on those rolls. So you have a low number, you want it to be higher, but you have to roll under a six before you can add one to it. Right. Um, yeah. So it makes it it makes it harder. I just want you to know that. Yeah. So the you better you are, something the be easier is to 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 get better at it. Okay. Um, I do have a question though. Um, my hunting and fishing is that supposed to be a little higher because I'm a wolf? Um, no. Okay. I think I think you have uh, you you have advantage whenever you <coughs> whenever you roll it if you use. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, it, or you have advantage whenever you roll it if you mar spend some willpower points. To mark your prey, uh, to find their scent. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I right. can't wait to go in a bar because I'm going to tell everyone to put it on my. Well, then I'm going to do evade healing and horrible duck pun jokes. So, yeah, evade healing and one more. You can do mentalism if you Sneaky. want to. Sneaking. Yeah, that's a good idea. So yeah, then just click all of these and uh, we'll see where you end up. Oh! oh! Look at that. So evade. Job, that's now a fourteen. I think he's got some weighted dice. <laughs> Hold up. Next up, we have uh -huh. a fail on he advancing healing and sneaking. Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, Ray, what? Do you, how do you wanna? Where is my, my mouse go? Um, I think batteries up. Uh, so, yeah, Ray, uh, what do you wanna boost? All right. Or attempt to boost, rather. Okay, uh, sleight of hand, and that's because I shot my fellow companion in the ass today. So yeah, sleight of hand. Yes. Oh. Well, damn. would you look at that? That's another Ooh, nine. Oh, baby. Damn, Woo! Uh, nine. Two more. All right. Two more to level up. Good job. Uh, uh, let's do. Um, that's the same amount of damage I took to the ass because of you. I want performance. <laughs> performance. Performance. Uh, yes. All right, that's gonna be hard. You get a real honor of five to to advance it. But yep. So we're doing it. Performance. Ooh, no. Nope. nope. Phil got a ten. Okay. Uh, and then one more. Um. <coughs> let's see. Writing, <laughs> and I don't know why, but writing. Uh, let's see. Where is that? I can't find it. Duck in his ass. <laughs> oh, no, writing. There we go. Writing. There it is. Shut up. Oh, no. yeah. You uh, yes. buy. Yeah, apparently you. Uh, so that goes up to Nate. Uh, apparently, watching a goblin ride a wolf gave, gave you some ideas on how to improve writing. Yeah, so now, uh, 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 if he would have knocked the goblin off of that thing and didn't light it on fire, could he have tried to have rode it and jumped on it? Uh, or would yeah. that have been a bad idea? I mean, it would have been a bad idea, but yeah. Because of his like, number. I'm not, I'm not going to stop you from doing anything. You could try, like, if you want to try some stupid shit, go for it. Good DM. Uh, you, good DM. Gonna fail? you never want to say <laughs> no. You want to go, really? You want to do, okay. All yeah, right, man. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not going to say you're going to succeed, but yeah, yeah. sure. Try exactly. it. Uh, like, it might be like, oh, you need to roll a natural one to be able to do that. Oh, you did? Fun. Uh, let's see where this goes. That's how we do this around here. Uh, but yeah. So that's uh, that's it for our first session. Um, I'm guess we're gonna try to do this, do this next Tuesday as well, or if we're not Tuesday, some other day in the week, we'll have to see what our schedule looks like. The goal is to do this for uh, once a week for a little while, see where we end up, um, and uh, see how long we want to go. If we want to change things around, or we, we or if we want to go forever, that's perfectly fine with me as well. I love doing this. Um, but yeah, I'm, Callie, thank you so much for joining. I, uh, I, Feel free to drop whenever you need to. Uh, yeah, thank you awesome for you the on. invite. Yeah, uh, job, it was great. Good job. Good job yeah, and uh, uh, and yeah. So, for like, what do you feel? What do you think? What's your first impression of this game? Um, 
It's fantastic, man. Honestly, I like the I like how it's it's completely different and uh, yeah, it still feels familiar. So that it's not like makes you think, oh, I don't know if I like it or not. Like it's just, yeah, it's, I like it. It's really, it's really cool, and it makes you think outside the box too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with that like levitation drop, yeah. Uh, so like, obviously, you you've all played a bit of Baldur's Gate uh, at this mm -hmm. point. Um, right. Like, do you feel like you're playing Baldur's Gate? Help made this easier for you? Yeah, you know what? I I yeah. can visualize like the map helps you kind of like visualize what's going on with the orcs or, or the goblins and what's going on and where they're placed at. I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, the dice, uh, soon, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. As, as soon as you can have a visualization of what's happening and an understanding of what you're kind of doing or what your motivation is, it, it goes super easy after that, really. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like the rules. I mean, I don't know the rules. Rules. I read through the rules like once. It's. It, I mean, you can't really know the rules until you start playing with it. I find. So what, uh, what I'd like you, to explain to everybody that is watching, though, you, you uh, this is a really good format. Um, you could get this book and be able to follow the rules very easily. But basically, it's just a set of dice rules that you think makes sense, and then you tell a story. Yeah, and it's like I, I might have gotten some of the rules wrong, but at the end of the day, that, <gasps> that like as long as it didn't like ruin our experience, it's fine that we got it wrong. Right. Like, like yep. the rules are there to guide you and help you tell the story. It's not there to to just like this is how it works. This is, like you you can't break the rules. No, you can definitely break the rules. Like I I'm in, like I know like there have been cases where like uh, when I've DM'd in the past, like oh yeah, I'm gonna do uh, like someone says I'm gonna try to to do this. So, like yeah, all right, you roll. And like, oh, do I want that to, like, yeah, you, you fall down, you take, oh, 15 damage? No, that's no fun. Uh, let's go five. Like, you, the the rules are there to help you um, at the end of the day uh, and make it to work as a game. But yeah, so as uh, as we just said, I, I mean, the, the set itself uh, is uh, very, like, gives you everything you need to get started. Um, yep. Yeah, as soon as you have an understanding of the dice or what dice you want to use or what rules you want to <coughs> implement, it is just your imagination that tells a story with enough detail that other people can run amok in your said story. It's uh, it's actually, you know, a real interesting um, thing to do. If nobody's tried tabletop gaming, you do have to have a group, but it, it, it is a lot of fun, though. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, a lot it of fun. Lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's great. Imagination is great. The dice... Um, you know, adding, subtracting, blah 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 blah, getting those uh, the damage points and stuff like. I mean, it's 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 pretty awesome. And and pretty interesting awesome. things can take place, like shooting your friend in the ass because the dice said they did. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. It and is like, gonna happen again. I worked on this sliding. Like <laughs> some of that, some of that is some of the most interesting stuff that takes place. Like yeah, um, you know, uh, during combat and you know, making mistakes outside of combat, failing your your checks. Like yeah, it, it and can bring like, a I lot mean, of SPG, you can you can probably attest to this better than anyone. I think you 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 played the most of, of Baldur's Gate so far. Um, like when you get to the higher levels in D and D, you are basically a god walking yeah. amongst mere mortals. Right. Like that's the way you just the way the game works. Yeah. But what I like about this here is like, as you guys noticed, it's fucking dangerous. Like you, you're just yeah. people right. doing no, these things, is. and yes, like yes, you can deal like eleven points of damage in one go. But at the same time, eleven points of damage might kill some of you. Like, yeah, but you know, well, as you can, none of us died. That's yeah, I know. Cool part. I, I, I there's like saving throws and like even yeah, yeah there's saving throws and everything as well. So it's, it's like it, it's so like you can fine. be the storyteller and end up having the dice screw you, especially if you have like a yeah, body yeah. hit chart. Like you can like uh, you can crit and then hit them in the mouth. Well, if you shot an arrow, guess what? They're dead. Doesn't matter if it's like. You're the big boss who is just talking shit and look tough. Like, doesn't matter. Um, it, it's interesting. The uh, yeah. the game can turn on you a little bit. It can be fun. Extremely fun. Yeah. So uh, I just wanted to show you guys, um, like, if, you, if you're interested in getting this yourself to play with your friends, um, the, I mean, first of all, thanks to Free League Publishing for giving us access, early access to this. Uh, we've had the PDFs for quite a while now. Uh, and uh, and I mean, if you want to have your own co copy, you can. It, it's available to pre-order on the website. It released today, so it's, it's what I'll say about this to... game here by just reading the the, the documentation, um, this does something that D and D doesn't. This like completely motivates you to role play because you get that chance to up your scores at the end or up to the DM's discretion, of course. 
Um, yeah, yeah. But but it forces you to role play, which is really cool. Um, yeah. If any of you are starting out, I would suggest make a character that's like you so you can pretend to be you. And then the next yeah. time, pretend to be something totally different. But exactly. it's easier to make decisions that you would make because you would make them, you know. Yeah. So it, like, if you want to pick up the, the, the core starter set, uh, what you get is basically you get the rules, you get the adventure book that I'm reading from uh, that's, uh, that, that the other guys haven't seen at all. Uh, you get the, uh, char- some, the, the, the character sheets for the pre-generated character as well as some really fancy some nice ones. Represent- you might want to but you want, might want to print your own um because yeah. these are very fancy you got a battle map that we haven't used uh, and you get a map of the misty veil that these guys are going to get next time you get a deck of initiative cards and the treasure deck and as well as a couple of die all basically all the dice you need uh the official release date of this is today so as of today this should be in local game stores uh and the uh msrp is 45 bucks I'm legitimately thinking, uh, Bjorn, about buying this and bringing it to my table. Uh, yeah. Because I, I think they'd like it. They'd, they're they going to rebel about the uh, 20 being a demon, but I'll, I'll get them on board quickly, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, uh, and uh, I mean, there's also there's also a free PDF, uh, quick start PDF, where you get um, you can download, which is nice. A, like, not all the rules, not all the details, but the, everything you need to create your character and get started. Uh, and then, obviously, you want to add the rules. So, yeah, it's... Uh, if you want to, like, I would say, like, I've played a bunch of different, especially a lot of free league publishing stuff I've played in the past because we're, like, me and my group, we play a lot of their stuff in general. Um, but we've also tried D&D. We've tried um, uh, Burning Wheel, which is an, a very interesting uh, way of playing playing in a table of RPGs, but it's also very rule-heavy in some aspects. Um, I would say this is the by far the best one to get started with that, that I've tried. Because it's so easy to get into in in, in uh, compared to others, um, it might not like when you start playing. You might realize, oh, we we really like the like the the, the combat or the like the like we want to do, um, you know, the, the way that D and D does does like combat. That's what we find fun. Or you may you may find, oh, we prefer the more of the like social side of it. And then from that on, you can go like, oh, is this still, still the right system for us, or do we want to pick a, pick another system? There are plenty of others to pick from. I think in total, like, there, there's hundreds of different systems. Um, yeah, this is a great pick for you know your first one if you don't if you're just starting out. Uh, you don't need to pick up a like a gym screen is nice to have. It's not not necessary. Uh, you might oh, want to no. pick an extra dice set, but yeah, like the core set will give you everything you need to really start playing, and you can even start with just PDFs. We had a DM use a DM screen, and it would just it would just aggravate all of us. We couldn't see their dice rolls. We couldn't see what they were doing. Yeah, so. and, and like, and, that, and like, that's fine. All like, I, I mean, I have a DM screen for D and D and for another system. I've used them once. I was like, this is it's nice to have because in the inside you have all these table tables of things, yes. and like quick yeah. references, which is great. But at the end of the day, it's like, I. But like, it, it can be a crutch. It can be a crutch because you need something to happen or want something to happen as the DM, but the dice don't cooperate, and you can pretend they did. That's the yeah. only problem I have yeah, with yeah. it. But uh, but that's also like that can be a good thing because sometimes you maybe want be. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, this is Dragon Man. Uh, we're gonna keep playing it because it's it's a lot of fun and uh, massive thanks to Free League for giving us uh, early access. As I said, um, this was also Kickstarter. I think the Kickstarter backers is getting the, theirs throughout the week as well. Uh, a friend of mine backs the Swedish one, uh, so I'll I'll might I might steal his stuff uh, at some point. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll hey, be back you. sometime soon, invite. hopefully. Probably probably same time thank next week. Chat. Thank you, chat. Yeah, thank you, chat. Thank you, uh, Free League. Thank you, players. It's been, I mean, like, we could do this without you. And uh, hopefully we can uh, get uh, our another. Like, we have two more players lined up to join us. Hopefully they can join us next week or the week after that. And we'll, mm-hmm. we are waiting for quite the adventure. We can, uh, there's, there's a lot of adventure written for this already. And there's uh, plenty more to come. See you awesome. next time.